All right, we're going to get started here. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is, uh, I believe, our second or it's probably our third, uh, but we hold a bi-weekly webinar based on industry, uh, industry trends and, and updates. And today we've got some pretty hot topics, um, exciting topics given the pandemic and the COVID situation we're all dealing with. Uh, in the past, we've done a lot on disinfect and protect, and we're really focusing in on that uh, in this session today. Uh, and in the past, it's been reopening and, and some other things. But today, a lot of a lot of the gyms uh, are open or allowed to open. Um, people are still kind of struggling figuring this out and the expense to it and, and the plans and the processes. So uh, two great topics here with disinfect and protect. Uh, and I've got a few experts here that we brought along. Uh, so happy to announce um, that we have Zach Franz uh, is a regional sales manager for Atmos Air. And he's going to present today. Uh, probably about 17, 20 different slides on, on Atmos Air and how that technology is impacting uh, the surface and the air uh, in our fitness amenity spaces and, and also any really indoor environment. And then I also have Dan Hubner. Dan Hubner is new to us, uh, just, just a few weeks in here, but he's an industry vet. Uh, I've known Dan for, for years and years and years, uh, but Dan's coming to us uh, and filling a position in uh, Heartline's technical service uh, side of the business uh, as the sales director. So welcome to, uh, Dan uh, and Zach. Very excited to have you guys here today. Uh, I'm going to jump in with the first few slides here. Really on um, what we've realized, we, we launched Disinfect and Protect pretty much, you know, three or four weeks right out of the gates as the pandemic was settling in on us. And we realized that we needed to do more in our preventative maintenance um, than you know, we were cleaning them, but we needed to kind of up that process, what we were cleaning with, how were we going to get rid of the virus, how were we going to be an essential service to the gyms. Um, so we very quickly adopted uh, our disinfectant process. And over the last four or five months, we realized the importance of this to our clients. Um, and it's, it, it needs to be um, done and it needs to be affordable and it really it is the new norm in the fitness space and and really all of our amenity spaces that we're living in so again what i'm presenting here today um, is a promotion but it really is the new norm for us here at heartline uh, and how we're attacking uh, what i feel is necessary to make these environments safe uh, inviting ease some of the anxiety of coming back to these spaces um, and, and do what's right for people's health and, and well-being. So uh, if you haven't watched anything on the disinfect and protect um, service that we provide, uh, please visit our website and go to the insight section. There's several videos and webinars that we've hosted, but today we're really focused on launching what has changed with this service for us uh, and the offering that we're providing our, our clients and, and really the end users. So we are going through a process of reducing the pricing uh, and packaging it with our preventative maintenance. In the past, uh, it was fairly separate type service. You could get it with the PM, you could get it without. We've done a lot of reopenings just to bring this service in and offer it complimentary to get our clients' facilities open. Uh, what we're doing now is making it more economical uh, so that we can package it together with the preventative maintenance because again, it is being you know, perceived as the new norm. Um, your users, your residents, the people in the fitness centers wanna know what have you done to the equipment, not just in the frequency of disinfectant, but long-term protection uh, with antimicrobial type solutions. So um, we are reducing the price on that, packaging it together with our PMs, uh, making it all kind of one-stop shop, come out, we'll do the PM, we we'll do the DMP, it's, it's done. Two other really big um, factors here. Um, we went ahead and uh, got a little bit more certified in this uh, than what you're gonna find your, your average service company uh, off the street has. Um, and the reason we, we did this is we wanted to make sure that we're doing it right, first of all, but we wanna make sure that we're covered, you know, just to protect our users, protect the company, and, and from a, a liability and insurance type perspective, okay? So in order to provide this type of service, and again, this is something for everyone to do your homework here, right? Because we have. Um, we are IICRC certified. 
we went through a crime scene certification to be able to apply. I know it sounds crazy, crime scene certification. This is the certification uh, for us to have coverage, communicable disease coverage, insurance, to provide this type of service. If your provider doesn't have these types of things in their toolbox, uh, you possibly have a liability exposure. So um, we have gone ahead um, and created a company with inside of Heartline, Heartline Technical Services, and that's where you heard me uh, basically talk about Dan heading up that sales uh, side of that division. Um, within that division, we are certified, we are insured to provide this disinfect and protect type service. Now the last piece, and I have another slide in here, really goes back to how do we serve our clients, put the end user's mind at ease, put our property manager's mind at ease. And, you know, the last thing we want anybody to face is having an infection incident, right? And, and how do we handle that, right? And we've talked about in earlier webinars, having your plan to react to federal, local, state mandates with guidelines, CDC, World Health Organization, all, all these different things. But at the end of the day, if you get an infection, someone reports an infection, they test positive, they've been in your fitness center, what are you going to do, right? Um, hopefully you've figured that out. Um, what we've put in place when we package DNP, and again, certification, coverage, the last piece here is our incident recovery plan. When we package preventative maintenance and DNP together, you Included in that is the incident recovery program. And what that basically entails is a plan, okay? And it is, it is a part of the program. There's, there's not a, an extra charge or a fee. We wanna help our clients. If you have something happen, we wanna quickly resolve it, right? We wanna disinfect the facility and we wanna get it back open, right? And we wanna provide a, a shield or a certificate that says, hey, We've handled this properly. The professionals have come in. It's safe again. So say you have an incident, an infection, you will close the facility for 24 hours. Obviously notify us right away, right? We will come out within 48 hours. We will apply our disinfect to protect through, you know, electrostatic spraying and, and guns, which covers everything. And then as soon as we're done, that facility is safe to reopen again. And this is something that you can utilize with your residents, your users. You've got the preventative maintenance to keep all the equipment safe and, and, and tuned up and, and operational performance. Uh, but you've also provided this disinfectant protected service, um, which also has kind of a recovery program to it. So th this is our big launch. We are approaching all of our preventative maintenance customers with this to add this on and again, uh, we are reducing the pricing on this drastically as I feel it's, it's absolutely necessary going into the fall, keeping these facilities open and safe. Let's do the right thing here, okay? So that's the big DMP promotion. Um, <clears throat> next, I'm gonna flip it over to um, Zach from Matmos Center. He's gonna, I'm gonna have to stop sharing the screen, so we're gonna switch screens here. And then Zach's gonna take it away on Atmos Air. Thank you, Jeff. I uh, appreciate the uh, uh, having me on today. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Fantastic. So as we jump ahead, a um, little bit about Atmosphere and our company. So we're, we're headquartered in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, we actually started as an air testing company in 2004. And that theme of us being a testing company and, and, and checking air quality data uh, really is a trend you'll see throughout this whole presentation and is really the focus of our company. Um, so what we would do is we'd go in to, to test uh, a facility's air quality and we'd have a uh, 20 or 30 page report that we'd uh, provide to the hey, customer Zach, and they'd sorry, say... Sorry to interrupt you, Zach, but we see your Outlook versus your PowerPoint. Oh. <laughs> you got two screens running there. It's not working. All right. Let me see here. Let's try that. Sorry for showing everybody my email. Is that better? That looks great. All right. So very good. Thanks for that, Jeff. Yeah. So uh, 
Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we go in to provide a 20 or 30 page uh, report to our customers about what was wrong with their air. And uh, so we set out to find a solution. Uh, we found our version of uh, atmosphere bipolar ionization actually in Sweden in 2008. We brought the technology over to the United States uh, and then bought the global rights to technology shortly thereafter. Uh, since then, we've had over 100 million square feet of installed space, over 8,000 projects uh, globally. I've actually partnered with uh, a contract manufacturer to help us keep up with demand, especially during these last uh, six months or so with COVID, uh, demand has been through the roof. And so uh, we've been able to keep our lead times at uh, respectable levels as compared to many in the, in the industry. Uh, many patents, I'll touch on uh, uh, some of these in more detail later. Uh, and then also uh, from a, a location standpoint, we have uh, satellite offices across the, uh, the states, our, R&D and manufacturing in Tempe, uh, offices in Dubai, London, and Shanghai as well. So uh, here's a video, and I'm gonna attempt to uh, play this through the Zoom for everybody. This is a, a video that Gensler Architects, world-renowned architecture firm, put together for us a couple of years ago to really tell our story in about three minutes. So uh, this is something that we can share uh, with folks right here. Can everybody see this? Yes. Okay. No audio yet, Zach. Yeah. It may not work then, Dan. Still no audio? No audio. So as I mentioned, um, as I mentioned, the uh, sometimes Zoom doesn't like to play videos. Um, we, we decided earlier we'd give it a try, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work. We'll happily, hopefully Dan can share that video with you after uh, today's presentation. I'll include that on the uh, link that goes out. Fantastic. So uh, moving forward here, in terms of you know, Atmosphere's presence uh, in, in the marketplace, some of our key markets and key verticals are listed here. But basically, we're, we're in all indoor spaces that have uh, uh, conditioned air. And so uh, commercial office space, probably our largest by square footage, uh, on down through healthcare, um, K-12 and higher ed and schools, hospitality, uh, sports, and on down the list. See some logos here. These are some of the folks that we've uh, uh, partnered with or who are using our technology to protect uh, folks in their buildings, um, you know, whether it's the New England Patriots, the sports world, or Hilton Hotels, who we have a global partnership with, we have some, uh, a great customer list of, uh, of happy customers. So the big question, um, obviously everybody's probably seen the spiky ball on TV and, and trying to look around this, this COVID virus and really other, other pathogens. And the science behind what atmosphere is providing in an occupied space, um, and these two words at the top, continuous disinfection. Uh, I, I preach those two words because as long as airflow is operating in a uh, occupied space and our systems are installed, you're delivering uh, a continuous disinfection to that space. Our, I'll explain later how our tube-based uh, system is in the uh, supply side of an air system. But the science really behind what's happening is when airflow goes over our tubes in an HVAC system, it delivers ions into the space. Those ions convert to what's called a hydroxyl radical, an OH radical. Those are then looking to steal a hydrogen molecule, simply put. So they'll, uh, you know, they're positive and negative ions that look for uh, obviously charged particles to attach to. As they do that and they attach to, let's say, a, uh, the virus, it steals a hydrogen from that virus's protein shell, changes the DNA uh, of the, uh, the virus or pathogen, and then leaves it basically uh, unviable no longer can reproduce, no longer can infect, uh, and it's destroyed the protein shell of that virus. Uh, so that's really the scientific explanation of what's taking place in an ionized environment. And I'll touch a little bit more here. Uh, Johnson Controls, who's a global distributor of, of, uh, of our atmosphere technology, put this slide together for us. And uh, you know, you'll see here, really that same process takes place against other living organisms and also VOCs in terms of how we break them down. Uh, you'll see here these slides, uh, whether it's mold spores, mold can't live in an ionized environment, 
whether it's bacteria. Again, we have many, many tests about how we uh, disinfect and clean from bacterial, bacterial issues. Excuse me, and of course, viruses. Now, obviously, everybody now is focused on, on coronavirus and COVID-19, but it's important, I think, to explain to customers that uh, we've been in this business a lot longer than March 2020. We've been helping provide clean air for folks uh, for 15 years. And so whilst COVID is the focus now, whether it was swine flu 10 years ago or the standard flu or, or staff or MRSA or any other kind of nasty bug that's out there, we're working to help protect against it. This uh, on the right here, you'll see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our focus as a testing company, you'll see some of the other uh, nasty bugs we've tested against and had great results. So in addition to pathogen reduction and mold reduction, uh, what's taking place in that environment that's ionized is a process called agglomeration, which is basically a combination of particles, right? So we're, we're combining oppositely charged particles uh, to make them bigger and heavier and help them to fall out of the breathing zone or be caught by your standard filtration. And in that process, what you're seeing is a, um, a reduction in particles in the air. You're helping people that have asthma and allergies. Uh, and so in addition to, again, the pathogen reduction, reduction and ultimate cleaning of the air, you know, we all, we all have heard in studies about where the virus is transmittable, whether it's all aerosolized particles, whether it's on surfaces. And I think the jury's still somewhat out, but more and more we're seeing about how do we clean the air. And the good news is about our technology is when ion saturate a space, they kind of attack what's in the air and on surfaces. So the good news is it's not just uh, an airborne solution, it's also a solution. So for us as a company, again, we've always wanted to measure and verify. And we've had a lot of white papers and studies uh, put together. Uh, this is Dr. Philip Tierno from NYU Langone Medical Center. He has a, a video he's put out about our technology, also a very detailed white paper. We were actually the benefactors of his research. We installed our systems at NYU Langone Medical Center several years ago uh, before COVID. And Dr. Chierno wanted to know what it was doing, how it was working. Uh, so we studied our technology and, and put together a white paper and has been since been a pretty big pro uh, proponent for using Atmosair as a solution to disinfect the space. So we have a lot of backup um, studies and white papers that uh, both lab testing and real world testing that we can certainly provide uh, for anyone that has questions. Hey Zach, there's been a request, if possible. Can you expand your screen? Not sure if you can, but. On my end, it's uh, taking up the whole screen. Okay, I've checked online. I, I don't think we can do more. So I'm not, uh, yeah, from, from where I'm sitting, it's taking up my entire monitor. Okay. Is it really small on your screen? No, not really small. I think I just did it. I made it larger on mine anyway. Uh, folks, feel free to take a look in your upper right-hand corner for a fit screen. You may be able to adjust the, the screen on your computer. I just did. Great. So as I mentioned, many tests, both in the lab and the real world spa uh, uh, spaces. Here, I know this is fine print, so uh, more importantly than, than the actual data on these, which we can share, I wanted to kind of focus on this slide because on the left, you'll see uh, staph uh, tested, you'll see E. coli tested, you'll see MS2, which is a norovirus surrogate test. And you'll see that we had a 99.9%, .9%, high 99 percentile reductions in all three of those in only 15 minutes. If you look on the right, we uh, tested against uh, kind of a superbug called C. difficile, or C. diff for short. Uh, Hospital Corporation of America asked us to do this testing a few years back, and in an effort to reduce readmissions and reduce hospital acquired infections, you know, how do, how do we get rid of this prevalent uh, superbug, if you will, in the healthcare setting? So we tested against it. And what we found was it, it, we eventually got to the high 99 percentile, but it took a little bit longer time of our systems running, you know, up into the 18 hours of our systems running. And then once they're running in that full capacity, then the, the, the bug will no longer live. But the reason I show this is because the bugs on the left, the staff, the E. coli, the MS2, about a one, 1 1.5 on a scale of one to 10 about how hard they are to kill. Uh, C. diff's about an eight, uh, a lot longer process. The good news about coronaviruses in general and, and SARS-CoV-2 is that it's, it's on the left. It's an easy 
uh, pathogen to destroy, an e easy virus to kill if you get to it. Uh, while it's causing so many issues out there and uh, it's highly contagious, the good news is, is if you, if you have the proper disinfection in place and you're utilizing a system like ours, uh, that you can, you can kill the virus. And, and while I'm, I'll go back, while I'm on this topic, we did testing at microchem labs against uh, coronavirus, uh, human coronavirus strain 229E to be exact. Uh, and just under 30 minutes, we had a 99.92% uh, reduction. Uh, so very effective. We tested it at our commissioned levels of ionization, unlike some other folks who kind of tried to zap it. Uh, so that's a great test results against coronavirus uh, as well. So benefits of the technology. So we've talked a little bit about the continuous disinfection piece. We talked about particulates agglomerating. Uh, so reducing dust and particulate matter, taking this stuff out of the air we shouldn't be breathing, especially in a fitness environment, okay? And so what we're doing, you'll see, if you're uh, in an ionized environment, you see the sun shining through the window, and you have a picture frame or a TV monitor or what have you, and it's got a layer of dust on it, right? In an ionized environment, that won't happen. You will not see that layer of dust. You will not see buildup of dust on frames, on uh, monitors, and so on. Just, one, just to show you kind of one example of what we're helping pull out of the air. Uh, we're making your filters far more efficient by agglomerating those particles, helping them get back to the return or weighing them out of the breathing ring. Odor reductions. We often get asked, you know, how do you break down odors? Well, most odors are generated at, this, at the source, which is a VOC, a volatile organic compound. Our ability to ultimately break down VOCs into uh, hydrogen, or excuse me, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So as you break down formaldehyde, toluene, some of the nasty VOCs that you can find in different environments, what ionizing those does is ultimately break them down into carbon dioxide and water vapor. So by doing that, where those odors created by those VOCs are then eliminated. Mold we've talked about, mold spores can't live in an ionized environment. We have many, many case studies uh, for time today, I won't dive into some of the uh, problems we've helped uh, big customers solve in the mold world, but um, very many case studies about how we've helped folks uh, alleviate mold issues. Uh, again, we're not a mold remediation technology. We're not there. If the black stuff is growing on your wall, we're not who you call. But what we are is mold spores themselves that are commonly around us will actually break those down and, uh, and eliminate them from the breathing environment. Um, Bacteria and viruses, we've certainly hit pretty hard. Again, that process of, of breaking down the protein shell and ultimately changing the DNA of a, uh, of a live pathogen is, is how our systems are working. And then in certain cases, and I won't dive into this too deep today, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, pieces to the puzzle on energy conservation, but in certain cases uh, where you're able to, per ASHRAE code, uh, reduce your amount of outside air that you're bringing into a building by up to 50%, and recycle the air that you're cleaning, you can save on energy. So a few inputs and some, and some data that has to be put together there, some calculations that our team can help you with and, 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 and help you uh, factor out to meet code, but just something to think about, especially on larger projects, full building projects that, are, that may be out there where energy conservation could be a key, a key part. I'll give you an example. U.S. Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Vikings, installed our technology uh, spring of 2019. In that 12 month span, uh, using ASHRAE 62.1 IAQ procedure, which allows you to reduce your outside air intake, uh, we saved just a roughly about $300,000 for that stadium. So big, uh, big return on investment for them. And what's happening is you're bringing in less air that you have to heat or cool, and you're recycling the air you've already conditioned. So therefore the savings. So again, back to the testing theme and, and the research behind our technology. A couple points I'll pick out here on this slide. Uh, one, the VOC reduction of 90%. Uh, Dr. Jensen Swang at, at Syracuse actually did uh, this test. We have a great report uh, where he tested our atmospheric BPI against VOCs in their lab. Uh, we had great results of 90% reductions there. It's actually where uh, the Harvard School of Public Health does a lot of their testing as well up at Syracuse. The second bullet I'll touch on because as, as customers may be looking at different strategies, at different uh, air cleaning strategies, the CADR that ETL put out is a clean air delivery rate. And what that basically is measuring is our ability to remove particulate from the occupied space, particulate matter. Again, 
PM 0.1 micron particles, right? PM 0.5 micron particles. These fine, ultra fine particles that we can't see that we're breathing in that we don't want to be breathing. Again, we're making them bigger and heavier by agglomeration and getting them out of the airflow. So our clean air delivery rate uh, was a score of 125. Seems arbitrary without any comparison, but to give you an example, uh, other popular air cleaning strategies like needle point ionization scored a 0.4. Uh, PCO, photocatalytic oxidation, uh, sort of 47. So we have the, by far the strongest CADR um, uh, out there in the market. Again, we've talked about MS2 staff and MRSA. I'll say in the fitness world, staff and MRSA are certainly, you know, I know we're again focused on COVID, but staff and MRSA have always been a concern in locker room settings and weight room settings. Uh, the reason we have grown and become an industry leader in the sports world with over 40 professional sports teams and venues is our ability and our proven ability to uh, reduce staff immersive uh, by 99%. Again, uh, that is a, 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 a certainly an element in the fitness world I would, I would choose. So what does the technology look like? Uh, so on the left here is our larger system, a larger air handler. This is a supply side um, of an air system, supply plenum, if you will, where after the fan, after the filters, airflow from here is then going into the main supply duct and then out into the occupied space. Our tubes that you see here are multi-core composite tubes sitting in the supply side. As airflow goes over that tubes, we're stripping millions of ions and pulling them, and the fan is pushing them out into the occupied space in a pulsating fashion, positive, negative, positive, negative. Uh, with the goal of getting as many of, the, of those ions into the occupied space. This is the left uh, is a picture of, uh, of our systems in a supply plenum of an air handler. In the middle, this is actually at, uh, I believe, the Staples Center, but it's a 30,000 CFM or you know, airflow of cubic feet per minute, 30,000 of air coming through that main supply duct. We've treated it with two of our larger systems. And you can see kind of an outside picture of what it looks like installed. On the right, for some of uh, the smaller uh, fitness centers, you'll see a Matterhorn um, system up on the top right. Um, this, you know, trying to equate it from CFM to square footage and use layman's terms, I think that the Matterhorn one tube system, you know, roughly 2,000 square feet of space, it could really serve up to, uh, depending on how the environment is. Uh, a Matterhorn 1,002 up to all the way to maybe 4,000 square feet. And then on the bottom right, you'll see our FC 400 system. Our FC 400, you know, is for smaller uh, areas, smaller units, and a lot of fitness centers we're seeing small uh, VRF systems or heat pump systems where you need a small device that can fit in there. This is a picture of our FC 400 in a Hilton hotel room uh, PTAC unit. We've all seen those units in a, in a hotel room. Uh, this is our system sitting inside uh, of that, uh, that system. Again, we can fit any size air handler. And in cases where there may be an issue getting to a supply duct or getting to an air handler, we do have some standalone units, um, that are two options now uh, that we can provide customers that they can uh, put on a shelf, you know, at breathing range in a fitness center, for example, called our Rainier product, as well as our Everest product. So again, two standalone options in situations where maybe an induct solution isn't available. Monitoring. So um, again, we want to measure and verify how do we make the invisible air visible, right? Anybody can tell you they're cleaning the air. Right? I have this great technology and we're going to clean your air, but we prove it. We want people to monitor their air quality so they know that our systems are working. We have two ways of doing that. One is our Atmos Smart system. This is kind of our, our higher end system for larger applications. Uh, you know, some of our early adopters are listed in fine print at the bottom there, but Arizona State University and you know, their buildings, Scale Children's Hospital, uh, ALL's offices in New York, and many more. Uh, this system sits in the return duct. As air comes back, recirculates through the return, it measures eight elements of air quality. PM 2.5, which is 2.5 micron particles, CO2, uh, VOCs, ozone, carbon monoxide, formaldehyde, temperature, and humidity. And it's all back nettable. If you have a, a property manager ask you, okay, how do I know, where do I see the data? It will tie into a BMS, uh, building management system, or BAS, building automation system, that uh, that building is using. 
uh, and it'll give them real time 24 7 365 data collection on the air quality in their building so it's a great way uh, it also talks back to our tubes so by cabling it to our tube system it'll actually ramp up and ramp down ionization levels as needed um, so if air quality starts to spike in a bad way it'll tell our system to ramp up a little bit uh, ramp up the ion, uh, ion production and therefore uh, kind of zap whatever the, the spike was caused by. Now, in, in, in more common use is our uh, atmosphere sense edge monitor. Again, PM 2.5 is measured, VOCs, carbon dioxide, temperature, and humidity. But this sits in this space where people can see it. Uh, it's kind of like a thermostat on the wall. Now, if a property manager says, I don't want my customers uh, and guests seeing my air quality, these all come with a cover, right? So it's the option of the, of the owner to cover this or leave it open for all to see. But what's great about it is it, it's, it's a kind of a, an easy, uh, easily understood system. So you have an air quality index score, that score of 36, for example, there is a pretty good air quality, and you'll see the color are green. If air quality gets worse, if that number goes up, that bar, circle fills green, yellow, orange, and then red. So it's very easy to, to understand how my air quality is doing. You also can select into VOC specifically, CO2 specifically, PM 2.5, see your actual data being recorded for each one of those air quality elements. My favorite part about it, Wi-Fi enabled. So it compare, gives you the ability to compare your indoor air to your outdoor air. And it's very powerful to tell a guest that look, we're not only are we treating our air quality, we're making sure we're providing a clean uh, indoor air environment, but we're also look look at the outside air versus the indoor air. If you can show them that your indoor air is better, because everybody feels safe being outside, right? If, if we're now inside and your air quality is better, it's a great story to tell. And also, it provides a dashboard. So we have this uh, custom dashboard that pro is provided to a building manager, a property manager where they can see real time 24 seven the air quality data where that sense is. Uh, so again, you know, building managers at home at 10 o'clock at night and wants to see what the air quality is as the, as, the, as the gym closes, they can pull this up and read their air quality. Also trends the data over days, weeks, months, and years. So you can always go back and see what your data was over a period of time. Back to the energy saving opportunity. I won't dive into the weeds too much here. I just want you to know that this is an option to look at, uh, especially again for larger facilities. We're looking at a, just a thousand square foot fitness center in, a, in a, big, a big building, may not be applicable, but if we're looking at the full building or a, strong, a large portion of a full building where we can really reduce outside air, still make sure we're controlling contaminants and concern in the space by measuring those with our monitors, uh, then we can look at some energy uh, savings opportunities. In some cases, very significant. Staples Center, uh, Center in LA had a 21% uh, savings on their uh, energy. Um, so it was a, just a great case study for us. Uh, US Bank Stadium I talked about. Those are examples of sports, but we have many examples where 62.1, ASHRAE 62.1 was used to, to save uh, energy costs. Quick, I always show this slide. Everybody's familiar now with UV. UV uh, the technology is kind of where atmosphere 20 years ago, they were where Atmosphere was. Everybody said, what's this UV technology? How does it work? UV is not a bad technology. It's, it, it just has some limitations. It does some things a lot differently than Atmosphere BPI. And so this slide, I think I used to kind of tell the, the, the story to folks who may ask you, well, I read about UV. Why are we not using UV? Well, here's the reason. UV is more of a passive technology. UV sits on the return side of an air hammer, meaning those contaminants in the space have to find their way back through the return, back into the air handler where the UV lights are to hopefully kill them. UV needs contact time, meaning if you have a candle and a lit candle and you wave your hand over it quickly, right, you won't burn your hand. But if you hold your hand over the candle for a period of time, your hand will burn, right? That's how UV works. If it can see the pathogen long enough, it will kill it. The problem is, and especially a fast moving air system, that air comes back to the return and goes right back to into the filter and out again before the UV has time to, to hit it. So, so again, more of a passive technology, waits for contaminants to come to it. Atmosphere, on the other hand, is on the supply side of the air. So as air is fed into an occupied space, we are saturating it with positive and negative ions. So it's kind of a seek and destroy 
more active solution to clean the air. This chart dives into other uh, electronic air cleaning methods and, and filtration. Uh, again, we're not a, a replacement for your standard filters, uh, but some of these other technologies, you can see a compare and contrast here in this chart. And I won't dive into every detail here, it can take a lot of time, but if anyone ever has questions about how are you different than X or Y, uh, we're certainly happy to, to, to uh, work with Dan and, and share that with everybody. And just some examples, everybody wants to know who's done this, right? Nobody wants to be, you know, everybody says they're a visionary, but a lot of folks want to say, hey, what has been done? What has been used in the, in the world? So I'll just, just dive through some examples of places that have installed our technology over the years. Uh, the old post office in Chicago, Uber, Pepsi, Walgreens offices, over 2 million square feet have our atmosphere technology. I used to the NFL, their uh, NFL offices, as well as I think it's 12 teams now, utilize atmosphere technology, Comcast, uh, and many more. Wells Fargo, we just installed at the Empire State Building uh, in June. Uh, that was our seventh building that's owned by Empire State Realty Trust. Uh, installed at the Space Needle in Seattle. A couple iconic places for you uh, where our technology is installed. Healthcare, we have a, a growing portfolio of healthcare customers and clients. You know, a couple of big names like Johns Hopkins, NYU Langone, um, Seattle Children's Hospital, Methodist in Texas. A growing portfolio in the healthcare space. Schools, here's just a, a few examples of higher ed primarily focused on here, but the K-12 space and private schools uh, really have become a new focus as we work to get students and teachers back in safely. Sports, uh, by far the industry leader in sports. I mentioned a couple at the top there. U.S. Bank Stadium where the Vikings play, Staples Center in L.A., but we've also done Little Caesars Arena in Detroit uh, where the Red Wings and Pistons play, uh, Rocket Mortgage uh, in Cleveland where the Cavaliers play, and you can see the, the, the brands and lists here. The Dallas Cowboys put us in at their old Valley Ranch Training Center many years ago, and uh, their head athletic trainer, a guy named Jim Maurer, uh, who's quoted here in a testimonial, said, they have to track how much they give out uh, allergy meds and different medications they give out to players. One of the best testimonials I've ever seen is he had given out over 40% uh, uh, of the year before. So 60% uh, less allergy medication to their players after they spent all the time in an atmosphere environment. It's a really great, uh, great feedback we got from them. And, and that's because those particulates and those VOCs are getting pulled out of the air where those guys are, were spending so much time. Hospitality, uh, we have a global partnership with Hilton. Uh, we've done over 5,000 rooms for Hilton hotels and they've created an allergy friendly room as well uh, with their technology. Marriott, uh, Carnival Cruises, I need to put Virgin on here. Virgin Voyages, uh, first ship, the Scarlet Lady. I saw that myself throughout the entire ship just recently as part of their kind of uh, relaunch. Uh, they were supposed to set sail in April, they had to postpone. Uh, so their first uh, sale will be, I think, in October, November, uh, and, and we're a big part of their strategy to reopen uh, safely. And, uh, and that's it, so happy to answer any questions. Okay, let's leave that slide up so that folks can, can see how to reach us if they'd like to, and they want to just direct questions directly to us. Um, and in the meantime, if uh, you have questions, feel free to type them into the, the uh, chat box. You could get a connect with that down at the bottom of your screen, I believe. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, I have a couple questions that were asked of me this week, Zach, uh, and we'll use those to give people to formulate their own questions and, and type them in. Uh, but uh, does this help against virus that has landed on a surface and is not in the air? I mean, yes, we have our disinfect and protect program, folks. We're gonna have some antimicrobials on there. But let's, uh, the question is, okay, there are other surfaces also. Yes, no, great question, Dan. So yes, um, as I, I hope I mentioned earlier, our system with an ionized environment, with a saturation of ions in an occupied space, not only are we hitting what's in the air, but ions are attracted to opposite terse particles. So whether that's on the bottom of a doorknob, underneath a weight bench, underneath a desk, our ions are traveling everywhere. They're saturating that space. Our goal is to get 1,500 ions per cubic centimeter, right? So think that. So uh, it, it, it's a saturated ionized environment. So wherever that pathogen is, it's seeking it out uh, and decontaminating. Good. So uh, 
we see that you have two different air quality uh, measurement devices. And, and I think that for a lot of our folks, uh, the sense edge is the most important one uh, because you can put it right in the fitness room and, and, and see exactly how you're doing it, provide people with a visual representation of what's going on. But uh, it doesn't measure the pathogens. So how does it, how does it help us? Absolutely. So that's a great question. Um, we can do bacterial and, and virus testing in a space, but it's a it's a process of closing the closing the gym, bringing in a crew of people to do uh, sampling, uh, and so it's a process. So to to just be able to have a monitor monitor VOCs in particular and carbon dioxide in a space is important. Here's why: the viruses typically uh, travel on aerosolized particles, and then they find a home, right? Whether that's uh, another person, unfortunately, whether it's a weight bench, whether it's uh, another surface. Um, and so those, and it's the virus, the coronavirus is a 0.12 micron particle. So typically that's going to be in the air and not filter. It's such a fine particle that that's why everyone's saying it lasts, uh, it can last up to a certain amount of time in the air. Uh, so they, by reducing the particulate, by reducing those ultra fine particles that those viruses are then latching onto and traveling with, then we're, by reducing that particulate matter and those VOCs, you, you know that the virus has nowhere else to go um, because it's looking for particles. When you sneeze, when you cough, when you sing, when you put particles into the air, that virus is traveling on those particles. So when you're measuring your particulate matter and your particulate matter is kept very low, then you know that you are not, uh, you're not in an environment that's, that's full of pathogens. And yeah, we do have some questions that are that are coming in, uh, some that re relate to the uh, antimicrobial product. Uh, Francine, if you can expand on that, I'm not 100% sure what your question is on that. Uh, I will look for that in just a moment. Got one more for Zach, uh, as people can prepare other questions. Uh, so sometimes, you, you know, you, you mentioned the heat element, you mentioned, uh, and I've heard about, uh, I've been, I've had questions about humidifiers in the system. How does that affect it? Great, great. 99% of the time, uh, the heat shouldn't affect us. Uh, in certain cases where we get uh, information about an air handler and it says max operating temperature may be 200 degrees, then we just want to confirm that, that it's not actually operating at 200 degrees. Our system's about 130 degrees is kind of the max of where we want to be. We really don't run into that issue too often, um, and oftentimes it's, it's a quick question to the uh, to the property to say, "Hey, we know you're rated for up to 200, but what is it operating at?" Uh, humidity is a great question that we run into sometimes. So, humidity, a humid uh, system, uh, a humidifier in a system will eat up ions, and so our goal is to be downstream from that humidifier. So, to solve that issue, we just don't want to install it next. To it. So, let's say air handler supply duct coming off the air handler. If the humidifier is right here, we want our system installed downstream, farther away from the humidifier. We don't want to be right before it or right after uh, because that humidity will then try to steal and eat up some of the ions before they get to the occupied space. And our goal is to get as many in, into the space as we can. This just points up the need to get a good, tight, accurate, informative site survey. Uh, that's how we can work with you to prepare the best uh, engineered solution. Uh, so there's a question here though, I guess that'll be for me, I'll handle it, um, from Francine. And she's asking about the, uh, the antimicrobial uh, that Heartline applied uh, at, at her location. And uh, the question is, how long does it last? Uh, and uh, we told her it was three months and yeah, that's, you know, it's essentially, you know, we, we do tell folks 90 days. Um, and that, you know, neatly corresponds with what we typically would do for preventive maintenance. So um, just let us know if you'd, you'd like to see us return and, and do a reapplication. Uh, and if, and just to expand on that, if you'd like more information about the specific microbial uh, used, uh, we can provide that for you. And the, uh, the product we're using is called Penetrex. Uh, and we do have some pretty good documentation uh, on how that works. So 
Um, that's all the questions I see. And um, you, I think you probably answered a lot of good questions in your presentation, Zach. So I think the next thing is for us to uh, thank everyone uh, for engaging with us in this important conversation today. And uh, uh, we will forward uh, a link to Zach's presentation uh, so that you can um, share that with your coworkers if you'd like. Uh, and otherwise, uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you. And thank you, Zach, for doing that fine presentation. You bet. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Have a great day, all.